Hello, pre-calculus students, calculus students, and especially, especially general seekers of truth. This video and the next several videos are really for you who love truth, because uh, we're getting into we're getting to the beginnings of some higher level stuff here. So, um, before you watch this video, make sure that you understand the Tower of Hanoi game. If you don't know what that is and how that works, you need to go back and, and look at the previous work or look at uh, some of the handouts from, from earlier in the class. Um, because you need to be able to understand what is, what is going on up to this point here. Right? So uh, what we want to do now is to find if there is a pattern between n and a sub n. N is the number of disks in the Tower of Hanoi game, and A sub N is the minimum number of moves necessary to solve the game. And we can, we can see that there is a bit of a pattern emerging here. And if you see this, you can see that uh, to solve for one disk, it's very obvious. You just pick up the disk and move it to the final location, and that's just one move. To solve for two disks, three here is really just two times one plus one. Seven here is just two times three times the previous number of moves plus one. And once again, what we're doing, what I'm doing here is recapping what you already know in the previous, from the previous videos. 15 is really 2 times the previous number of moves, 2 times 7, plus 1. And of course, 31 is 2 times 15, plus 1. So, however many discs there are, if we want to figure out the minimum number of moves, we look at the previous minimum number of moves multiply that by 2, and then add 1 to it. And we can trace this process back all the way back to, to one disk. Now, if you notice here, at, when n equals 1, we don't, need to we don't need to define it in terms of the previous, because n equals 1 here is the starting case. Okay? So the, it's the starting point. So we, already, we, we don't need to go back any further. So the recursive definition for this uh, Tower of Hanoi sequence is fairly simple. For any a sub n, any minimum number of moves, if you want to know um, what is the num minimum number of moves for n dis, you take the previous, the, number, the minimum number of moves for n minus 1 dis, multiply that by 2, just as what we're doing here, and then adding 1 to it. Now this only applies when n is two or greater. So we should clarify that this is for n greater than or equal to two. So we remember that we need a starting point somewhere. And so our starting point for the Tau of Hanoi must be at one. So a sub one is equal to, to one. So this is the recursive sequence that describes the minimum number of moves necessary to solve the Tower of Hanoi with n number of disks. Now, let's move on and see if we can find an explicit formula, or at least uh, you know, figure out the beginnings of an explicit formula. And what you notice here is that 1, 3, 7, or what I notice here is that 1, 3, 7, 15, 31, they're very, very close to powers of 2. So 3 is really close to 4. Right? 3 is really just 4 minus 1. 7 here is really just 8 minus 1. Uh, 15 is 16 minus 1. And 31 is really just 32 minus 1. And 1 is, well, 2 minus 1. So if we uh, try to find some sort of pattern here, we can express this in terms of powers of 2. So this is really 2 to the first minus 1. This is 2 to the second minus 1. Uh, this is really 2 to the third minus 1. 
16 is 2 to the 4th minus 1. And of course, 30, 32 is 2 to the 5th. And then we have minus 1 here. So the explicit formula, and I'm going to, this, this looks like a sub n is equal to 2 to the end minus 1. And I'm going to put a question mark here because we haven't quite proven this yet. This is a good conjecture, and this, this, we can go on, you know, we can go on listing out these forever, but the truth is we haven't really proved this yet. Just because the pattern looks good um, doesn't necessarily mean it's true. It's probably true, uh, but mathematics there are in mathematics there are many examples of conjectures and hypotheses that seem true for a very very long time for very very large numbers, but isn't true um, for some. Oops, for, and, but eventually someone finds a counterexample. So. We think that this is true, but we don't know, right? So maybe at like n equals 50, the, the explicit formula will suddenly be different. We, we don't quite know that for sure right now. So we're gonna need some way in order to prove um, that, such a, that such a claim is true. So that's what we're going to do, work on in the, in the next video, uh, where we expand on this and show how do, we, how do we go from the recursive formula to the explicit formula and prove that such a statement is true.